In outback Australia, there was an empty town left abandoned after the monster waves. No wave had come through, but the town was falling apart anyway, most of the buildings having been empty long before the evacuation. Upriver cotton farming had long ago depleted the town's primary water source, and what was left had been diverted by a major battle between monsters and essence users that had devastated the land to the north. When the waves came to an end, the town hadn't been worth reclaiming. The old football oval had been nothing but patches of dry grass, clinging to a field of dirt when Jason Asano and Farrah Huron claimed it. The handful of buildings and the old grandstand couldn't blame the recent troubles for their state. They had been little more than dried-out shanties long before magic came into the open. Only the bar had seen regular maintenance, even having a coat of paint younger than Jason, if only barely. Something incongruous now occupied the dirt oval. Standing stones, set out in a ritual pattern of concentric circles. At a glance, it looked like someone was attempting to ostentatiously outdo Stonehenge in a ghost town in the middle of nowhere. Jason and Farrah sat in the sun-bleached grandstand, looking out at their work. They'd been sitting there for some time, talking. It's time, Jason said. You know they're watching us, right? Farrah asked. I do, Jason said, his voice weary. Every petty faction in this world. Dogs fighting over scraps. Once we're gone, they'll swoop down on this place, looking to plunder any knowledge or power we leave behind. Leave them to their petty squabbles, Farrah advised. Jason nodded. I'm done, he said, and pushed himself to his feet the old wood groaning underneath him. Did you end up talking to Amy? Farrah asked as they left the grandstand and walked towards the standing stones. I know you were in two minds about it. I did, Jason said. Not that there was much to say. It was just sad, more than anything. Once upon a time, we knew each other better than we knew ourselves. Now we barely recognize one another. She wasn't angry? She was tired. Kaito made his own choice to stand up for his world, and she knows that. It doesn't change the fact that her kids will grow up without their father because he followed me. They reached the standing stones that Farah had hauled into place using her prodigious strength. They passed between the stones to the empty circle in the middle. It was one of the few patches of lingering grass, jutting from the hard dirt, yellow and brittle. You won't be back for a long time, Farah said. If you want a last look around Earth, this is it. If we wait another day or two before going, it won't make a difference. Jason didn't say anything. Instead, he opened a portal to his spirit vault, the extra-dimensional realm that existed within his soul. He stepped through without looking back. Jason's spirit vault was increasingly becoming less of a vault and more of a realm. His power was growing, and the outworlder ability that created it had gone through a rare secondary evolution— it had also been shaped by introducing the dimensional door he had taken from the Builder's control, and the dimensional bridge given freely by the World Phoenix. Most of all, the realm inside his soul was shaped by the tribulations his soul had endured before recovering all the stronger. The layout of his spirit realm reflected his spirit domains, the regions on Earth that existed in normal reality but were under his power. It centred on a towering pagoda tower of smoky crystal, each brick infused with sparkling motes of blue, gold and silver light that danced within the solid bricks as if they were liquid. From the tower a vast estate of cloud buildings sprawled out into landscape that ranged from wild groves to carefully cultivated gardens to a cave system filled with luminescent fungus. At the edge of his domain was a wall of darkness that seemed to devour the light around it. Even the starry void beyond was bright by comparison. The most prominent change brought about by the World Phoenix's bridge was that the wall now had an arched gate. Beyond the gate, a rainbow bridge extended into the star-speckled dark. In the distance, a stream of multicolor light passed, coming from the depth's void and disappearing into the distance. 